Hello again. So what we're going to do today is we are going to talk through some notes on multi-step inequalities. Right. So in the past, we've already taken a look at two-step equations and inequalities. We've taken a look through multi-step equations. Right. This is kind of like our next step. So the only difference between multi-step inequalities and multi-step equations is the symbol in the middle. Right. So whereas equations have an equal sign, inequalities are going to have one of these four symbols. Right. Those are our inequality symbols that you'll find in the middle. Right. So you might notice also that our steps that we've got here for solving these are pretty darn similar to what we had before. In fact, they're pretty much the same thing with an added little step at the end there. So the very first thing that we're going to want to do is find a common denominator to distribute. And just like before, we only have to do that if we have fractions, right? So if it helps, you know, put a little fraction off to the side there, that's the only time that we really need to worry about that step. After that, if we have any parentheses, then we're going to need to do some distribution. All right, we're just going to need to multiply whatever's on the outside of those parentheses onto the inside. Afterwards, we have to combine any like terms we have that are on the same side, right? Just smush some stuff together. Then we start moving stuff around. We have to move all our x's to be on one side of the equal sign, or the inequality symbol in this case. We then have to add or subtract to move all of the constants, right, all those numbers without a variable, to the other side of the inequality symbol, right, whatever it happens to be. After that, we've usually got a number that's still kind of stapled on to the variable, right, so we're going to need to multiply or divide, usually, to clear out that number, which we call the coefficient. And last but not least, right, this is the new step that we got to be a little careful of. If we multiplied or divided both sides by a negative number, then what we need to do is flip our symbol to face the other way, right? So it opens, you know, one of two directions, either opening towards the left or opening towards the right. You just flip it to be the opposite if you multiply or divide by a negative. All right, so let's just jump right in. I'm trying to make this one, this video a little shorter than the last one because I know I talked for a whole heck of a long time. This isn't all that different. All right, so... Same kind of idea as what we've been doing in the past, right? We're going to move our x's around and kind of go with it that way. What I will mention is something to kind of keep in mind when you're doing these is that, you know, that last step where you have to multiply or, like, it matters if you multiply or divide by a negative, right? We can kind of avoid even having to do that if we always move the smaller number of x's, right? So in this case, if I'm looking at the x's, I've got negative 11 x's and then I've got 4 x's. Right? Negative 11 is less than 4. So I'm going to move those 11x's over to the right-hand side. Right? So to do that, because it's minus 11x, I'm going to add 11x. All right? So when I do that, what's going to happen is it's going to cancel out the 11x's. We're going to be left with just 42. Right? And again, the only real thing that I'm doing differently than with the multi-step equations is I'm just carrying down that different symbol and worrying if I have to flip it at some point, right? So honestly, you know, if you're feeling pretty okay about multi-step equations, this is pretty darn similar, right? If you're not, then what I might suggest is I am going to be talking through things a little faster in this one. What I would suggest is go back to the multi-step equations video and kind of watch through that one for a little bit more detail on these steps that I'm writing out right now, right? So in this case, we got all our x's over to the right-hand side, which means that that 12 had to move to the left, which is why I subtracted it from both sides. I'm now at this point where I need to get rid of this 15, so I'm going to divide by 15 to get just that x. Right? Over on the other side, 30 divided by 15 is just 2. Right? And again, now that I'm down to the end of this, I need to double-check, make sure that my symbol is facing the right way. Right? So when you're doing that, be on the lookout for you know, what you did each step. Here, I just added 11, not even worried about it. Here, I subtracted 12. Again, not worried about that. Here, you know, I divided, right? That's something that we keep a close eye on. But all we need to do is take a look at the number we divided by. We divided by a positive 15. Because it was positive, my sign is facing the way that I want it to be, right? So that's our answer, all right? Um, I know that some people really like to have the x on the left-hand side of their answer, right? So another alternative you could have, you, know, you could have x on the left and 2 on the right. But when you do that, make sure that your symbol is still opening towards the same 
number. So in this case, my answer over on the left-hand side there had it opening towards the 2. So I need it to be opening towards the 2 if I want to rewrite it that way. All right, so it's still showing the same information. All right, so what I want you to do is pause here, try out number 2. So hopefully you gave that a shot. Right, I've got my work up there. Right, we had to move our x's around, so I moved them over to the side. I then had to move 8 to the other side to get it away from that negative 2x that we had right over here. After that, I had to get rid of the negative 2, so we divided by negative 2 there, and we get our answer. On this one, you might notice, and if yours looks a little different, but you still got one of these two answers, then that's what we're going for. On this one, I did divide by negative 2, right? I just kind of like moved my x's around and ended up having to divide by a negative. Right, so that's why I had to flip my symbol from opening to the right and switch it to opening from the left. Right. And that's really all we're doing. Right, we'll give it the old flippery do onto this next one. Right. So we're going to solve this inequality. Right. So same kind of deal. Right. I'm gonna. Oops. I'm apparently gonna draw a squiggly line by accident. <laughs> right, let's try that again. Close enough. So what I'm going to be doing here is I need to go ahead and think through those steps again, right? I don't have any fractions, so I can skip the common denominator step. I do, unfortunately, in this case, have to do the step with distribution because I've got some parentheses, right? So this 4 is going to distribute to everything over there. This 5 is going to distribute to everything in the parentheses that it's next to, right? So let's just take a second. We'll do that. Right? Remember that when we're distributing, we're multiplying. So 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times 3 is 12. Over on the other side, 5 times 2x is 10x. And 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. All right. After that, it's just moving the x's around. I'm going to move the smaller number of x's, which is the 8. All right. If you worked ahead a little bit and you tried this one out, you know, and you move the 10, that's okay. All right. doesn't mean you're wrong. It might look a little different along the way, but we should end up with the same answer at the end. Right. In my case, I've got all my x's on the right, so I need to move that 20 to the left. Right. Again, adding 20 because it was a minus 20 before. We want to cancel that right on out. So 12 plus 20 is 32. We get 2x over there. And we got to divide to get rid of that 2 that's on the coefficient. Right. That's really what we need to do there. So we'll get that, what is that, 16? It's greater than or equal to x. Right. And again... I'm going to be writing out our answers in both directions when we talk through them like this, just in case, right? But you only need to write it out one of those ways, right? Whichever way you get at the end, hopefully it matches one of the answers that I wrote, right? So again, sometimes we might have to distribute just like we did on this one. You just distribute in there and keep on working like normal. Um, you might notice that I kind of skipped over the step where we got to check and see if we got like terms, right? But you know, hopefully it seems all right. So just like before, I want you to pause here, try out number four. So hopefully you gave that a shot. I've got my work for number four right here. Right, so we distributed first, right, doing the, those steps right here. I then moved my x's all to be on one side. I moved the 24 away from the 28 x's over there. And then I had to get rid of that 28 that was hanging on to x. So that's how we get our answer, that x is bigger than negative 2. Right. So, again, I know I'm rocketing through this. So, again, if you're having a little bit of trouble and you're, like, not sure about some of these steps, please go back and watch the last one. Um, this is really, really similar to that, except for that, like, maybe we have to flip the symbol kind of stuff. So, for something like this one, again, I'm thinking through my steps. I don't have any fractions, so I can skip over that, but I do have some more distribution to do. So, I've got this 2 that needs to multiply in there. And look at that, another 2 on the other side. Keep my color coding consistent. So on each side, we're just going to take care of that first. This 7x just comes right down. There's nothing going on with that. As we do that distribution, we get 2x minus 6. Same thing over here, the 12 just comes down. 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 5 is 10. Right. And then now, this is where we should be looking for like terms. Right? There's a lot of stuff on each side. So remember that when you're looking at like terms, you're looking at one side at a time, right? So when we're looking at the left, just pretend that this right side just doesn't even exist. If I'm looking over there, I've got things that are like terms together that I can just smush together, right? We've got a 7x and a 2x that I can combine, right? 
Then when I'm looking at things on the right hand side, again, I'm imagining that the other side just doesn't even exist for a minute. When I'm looking over there, I've got a 12 and a 10 that are like terms, right? So I can combine those as well, right? You might notice that when I grabbed like the number that was a little bit later, I also grabbed the symbol in front of it. You want to keep track of those, right? If, if for some reason we had to work with this negative six, we want to think about it as negative six. All right, so that's something to keep in mind. Over on the right, uh, left hand side in the red, 7x plus 2x is 9x with that minus 6 coming down with us. Over on the right hand side with the blue, 12 and 10 gives us 22 plus that 2x that was there already. Right? And then again, from here, it turns into some of the ones we've already been doing. We're going to move our x's around, so we're going to subtract 2x to move those over. 9x minus 2x leaves us with 7x's. Everything else is the same until right now where we're going to have to move that 6 away from the 7x's. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides to do that. We're going to get that 7x is less than 28. And we got one last thing to do, which is to divide to get rid of that 7. And right, again, we want to get that x all by itself. And right, so when we do that, we're going to get the x is less than 4. All right? And again, if you worked ahead a little bit, you might have moved your x's the other way, and your answer would be that 4 is bigger than x. Right? And either one of those is fine. All right, so again, that was number 5. Again, pause here, try out number 6. If you're feeling pretty okay about it, you know, it's okay to just kind of see what I did as well, I'm not going to lie. You know. So, same kind of deal for this one, right? We started off by doing our distribution. I then, on each side, looked for some like terms to combine. We smushed them together, and then we're just moving our x's around, right? We're getting those five x's over there. We're moving that four over there. We had to, in this case, divide by negative one the way that I moved my stuff around. So I did have to make sure I flipped my symbol to face the other way as I went through that last bit, right? So again, as long as your answer matches one of those ones that I've got down at the bottom, that's really what we're going for, right? So then we got to talk about ones with fractions. So... The good news is that, again, just like a lot of this other stuff, it's not going to be all that different than what we did last time with the fractions. So first things first is I know I'm going to need to multiply to clear them out, so I'm going to put some big parentheses around everything. To figure out what number we need to multiply by to clear those fractions out, again, remember that one way you can do it is you can just multiply the different denominators together, right? So in this case, those different denominators are 4 and 6. So 4 times 6 is 24, and you could definitely use that, right? It will work out just fine. But if I wanted to use a smaller number and maybe you make my life a little easier, I can think about multiples of 4 and 6 and see where they match up. 4, 8, 12, 16, and da-da-da. We got 6, 12, 18, da-da-da. So what I'm looking for here when I do this is I'm looking for a number that they both share as a common multiple. So in this case, 12. 12 works, right? And again, you could still use 24, but 12 is a smaller number. It's going to make life a little easier. So if you do have it in, in you to find that, you know, it's not going to be a bad thing. Right? So after that, I then do need to go ahead and do this distribution here, right? So we want to make sure to remember to do each and every piece of that, right? It needs to multiply to everything. So when we do that, there are two ways to multiply with fractions, which, you, again, you might remember from before. Let's talk about 12 times 1 fourth x. All right, when I do 12 times 1 fourth, right, we want to think about 12 as a fraction. Right? So again, remember that 12 is the exact same thing as 12 divided by 1. Right? They mean the exact same number. So then when I multiply fractions, I'm just multiplying straight across on the top and bottom. Right, so we've got 12 times 1 is 12, and then 1 times 4 is 4. Right? From there, we can go ahead and simplify that. Right? 12 divided by 4 is 3. So out of that first little arrow back in the problem, I'm going to get 3x. Right? 12 times negative 8, I believe, is going to be negative 96. Right? And then we can do the same thing for that last bit. Right? 12 times 1 sixth. Right, so again, think about it as 12 over 1 times that 1 over 6 that's in the problem 
and just multiply straight across. 12 up top, 6 on the bottom. 12 divided by 6 is 2. All right. So then we get to here, and it's just solving it out like usual. All right? we got to move some stuff around, get it away from where the x's are. So that's why I'm going to add 96 to both sides. All right, so we're going to get that 3x is greater than 98. And I don't think it's going to come out too nice, but that's okay. Right, we're going to need to divide by 3 on both sides to get rid of that. And we're going to get that x is greater than, let's see, 98 divided by 3 is 32 and 2 thirds. Right? Or if I wanted to turn it into a decimal, it's 32.6 that goes on forever. So we can just put a little bar above it like I did there. Right, and that's what we're trying to get to. Right, if that last step, you know, if you need to use a calculator, I just did. Right, go for it. It's not going to hurt anything. Right, but hopefully the other parts seem pretty all right. So with that in mind, try out number eight. Right, it's pretty similar to the one we just did. So hopefully you paused and gave that one a shot. Right, this is what I got for mine. I found that seven and two would multiply to give me fourteen. So that's what I used on the outside there. When I multiplied 14 times 1 7th, I got 2x. 14 times negative 2 is negative 28. And 14 times 1 half was just 7. From there, it's just moving the 28 over, dividing by 2, and we get that x is greater than 17.5. Right. So let's talk through another one together, right? Because this one's got a lot going on. We've got a lot more um, different denominators to worry about here. So again, it can be kind of helpful to, you know, write them out and see, like, all right, what's a, what's a common multiple of all of those, right? You might be able to kind of figure it out already if you're, if you're feeling confident in these, but it never hurts to kind of talk it through. So if I'm thinking about multiples, right, multiples of 4 or 4, 8, 12, 16, 20 is kind of interesting, right? If I think about the multiples of 2, right, I know that I can get to that same number, 20, right? Multiples of 2 are just all the even numbers. If I think about multiples of 5, 5, 10, 15, 20. Ooh, there we go. So if you kind of have an idea in mind, right, then it's helpful to just, you know, take a look and see, like, all right, maybe is there a number that's even smaller I could have used, right? But the 5 is kind of limiting us, right? The 5 only had 5, 10, 15, or 20, and the first one that matches up with anything from the 4s is 20. Right, so that's how we can figure out that 20 is a good number to use here. Right, so when we go ahead and do this one, we can still do the fractions out the same way that we did on the first one, um, but there is a little shortcut way that kind of helps out with these sometimes. Right, so what I want you to think about is we're going to take this 20 and we're multiplying it to this 11 over 4. Right, so a way that we can do that is take the 20, and divide by what's on the bottom first. So 20 divided by 4 is going to give us 5. Now with that 5, we don't want to just write down 5. We then want to take the 5 and multiply it by whatever's on the top there. All right? So 5 times 11 is 55 with an x. Right? So if we do it this way, it kind of saves us a lot of hassle of having like big numbers and fractions and we got to plug them into a calculator, right? Sometimes we were able to get away with doing this part in our head a little bit. Second part, right, we do 20 divided by 2. So 20 divided by 2 is just going to give us 10. And then with that 10, we still want to multiply by 17. So 10 times 17, we'll just tack a 0 on there, it's 170. All right? When we get to the other side, and let me kind of straighten things out a little bit here. All right, when we get to the other side, we're going to do the same thing. Right? We're going to have 20 divided by 2, which is still 10. And then 10 times 7 is 70. All right? And if the way that I'm talking through this seems like, you know, witchcraft, right? <laughs> it's okay. You don't have to do it this way. You can do it out that longer way that we were talking about before. Right? But... You know, it is really easy to say, like, all right, 20, divide by the bottom. 20 divided by 5 is 4. And then 4 times 38 is something that I'm still going to plug into a calculator just to be safe. Right? But on those other ones, it saved us a bit of time. 38 times 4 is 152 to round things off on this. 
right? So from there, you know, business as usual. We're moving our X's around. I'm going to move these 55 X's over, right? And if I'm being completely honest, if you're feeling like you kind of get this part, it's okay to kind of skip ahead. You know, maybe try the rest out on your own and skip to where I get my answer. That'd be all right. I wouldn't even know, right? When we do 70 minus 55 X's, we're going to get 15 X plus 152, right? Then we got to move that 152 away from the X's. So I'm going to subtract that from each side. 70, well, 170 minus 152 is going to leave us with 18 over there. And then again, this is not going to come out too nice when we divide by 15 to get rid of that from the X's. All right, so 18 divided by 15 is going to be 1 and 1 fifth, which, again, if you think about it as a decimal, is going to give us 1.2. Oops, oh, whoa, whoa, and I just made a, a pretty, not, not a huge mistake, obviously, but, you know, something that's easy to do is I just put an equal sign down in my answer when we really want it to be less than or equal to, right? It does make a difference, right? It means something different, so we've got to be a little careful on that, right? So what I want you to do, pause here, try out number 10, and then I promise we're almost to the end. All right, so hopefully you gave number 10 a shot, right? I chose to use 12 as my common multiple there. So when we multiply that in there, 12 times negative 1 fourth gives us negative 3 with an x. You know, 12 times negative 1 is just negative 12. Same thing with the negative 24. And then 12 times 1 sixth is just 2, right? Then we're moving our x's over, moving our numbers away from the x's, dividing to get rid of the 21, and then we're good, right? So... One last little bit of stuff to talk through, which are word problems, okay? So you might see that I already kind of did out number 12. Spoiler alert, I'm going to have you do out number 12 on your own, <laughs> you know, for the time being. All right, let's talk through the other ones. The Smith family planted a 12-foot beech tree and a 4-foot maple tree. Beech trees grow at a rate of 0.5 feet per year. Maple trees grow at a rate of 1 foot per year. We want to write and solve an inequality to figure out when the maple tree will be taller than the beech tree. Right, so again, best thing to do with word problems is read through them and then read through them again. Right? When we're reading through it the second time, think about like what the two sides of your inequality might be. Right? So on mine, I'm thinking, all right, we got a 12-foot beech tree and a 4-foot maple tree. It sounds like the trees are going to be competing. Beech trees are growing 0.5 feet per year. Maple trees are 1 foot per year. Right? And then we got to figure out what it is we're actually tasked with doing. We want to write and solve an inequality to figure out when the maple tree becomes taller than the beech tree, right? So we've got a lot of stuff that we just kind of grabbed there, right? One thing that we need to do is we need to figure out when. Right? I actually just kind of glossed over that part. We need to figure out when that's going to happen. So if we don't know when, then we're going to need to talk about time. The variable I'm going to set up is I'm going to say that y is the number of years. Because right? if you're talking about trees, you probably want to talk about it in number of days, right? Because it's not going to have a whole lot of change from day to day, right? But, you know, we're talking about years. Um, another way that I kind of know that I should use years is that these units, like, it says per year on each one of those. Right? So if I figure out the number of years, that kind of matches up with what they're telling me already. The other thing we need to do is we need to figure out which direction our inequality symbol is going to face. Right? So our two categories of information kind of are beech trees and maple trees. Right? We want to figure out when the maple tree becomes taller than the beech tree. Right? So if the maple tree needs to be taller, then it should be bigger than the beech tree. Right? Last little bit that we need to worry about here is setting up the inequality that we're going to work on. Right? So the beech tree stuff I have highlighted in yellow on mine, and the maple stuff is in blue. On the beech tree side, it started at 12 feet, and then it's growing. We're going to be adding on to that 0.5 feet each and every year. But the way that I show that I'm doing it multiple times is that that's where I put my variable. Right? Um, it's helpful to think about, you know, anytime you have something that says per year or each day or something like that, 
that's telling you that, all right, that's the number that's going to have the variable with it, right? It doesn't always have that, but when it does, it's a real clear, like, hey, do this thing, you know? Over on the other side, the maple tree started at four feet, pretty small, but then it's growing a full one foot per year, right? After we get to there, you know, that's our inequality. Just got to solve this out, moving stuff around and all that jazz. So... I'm going to start by moving all of my y's to the same side. In this case, I'm going to subtract 0.5y from each side to move that over. Right? So those are gone. We got just 12 over there. The other side is 4 plus the remaining 0.5y's. After that, we need to subtract the 4 to get it away from the y's. Move, delete the 4. 12 minus 4 is 8 over there. We still got 0.5y. And then last but not least, we got to divide to get rid of that 0.5, right? So it might be a little counterintuitive, right? You might think like, oh, we're dividing. It's going to make the number smaller. When you divide by a number that's between 0 and 1, our answer is actually going to get bigger. So 8 divided by 0 0.5 is going to be 16, and that's years. Right? So... Oop, I feel like I might have made a mistake here. I don't think so, but... Oh, never mind. We're all good. So what we're saying here is that when the years is more than 16, right? When, when we've taken more than 16 years, then that's when the maple tree is going to be taller than the beech tree, right? And that's all we're really doing, right? The hardest part, I hope, is just setting it up, right? There's a lot of stuff to grab and a lot of things to put in particular places, but start by doing your variable, then figure out, you know put it in categories and figure out which direction your inequality sign is facing, and then just plug the stuff in, right? Once we get to here, I'm hoping that it doesn't seem so bad because it's just like what we've been doing on the other problems, right? So what I want you to do is pause here and try out number 12, right? You can already see that I've kind of got some important stuff highlighted and underlined there, so if you wanted to use that a little bit, that's not a bad idea, right? So again, pause here, give that one a shot. Hopefully you did, right? This is what I got for mine. I used P to talk about the number of packages shipped right over here. And then I was thinking through, you know, which direction my symbol had to face. Right? We we're talking about delivery companies. I wanted to figure out how many packages, after how many packages in one month will on-time delivery become cheaper. Right? So if I wanted on-time delivery to be cheaper, then it should be less than the alternative. Right? After that, setting it up. To do the quick delivery stuff, it was 40 plus 5p. It's because they charged a flat $40 and then $5 per package, right? So again, that word per is coming up again. That's telling me that that 5 is where that variable needs to go. Same thing on the other side with the on-time delivery. It was 50 bucks to start and then 450 per package after that. We solve it out like normal. We figure out that if we ship more than 20 packages in one month, then on-time delivery is going to be cheaper. The last little bit, and then I promise we will be done. Right? Two buckets have a hole in them and are leaking water. We got bucket A has 800 milliliters of water and is leaking at a rate of 6 milliliters per minute. Bucket B has 1,000 milliliters to start and is leaking 10 milliliters per minute. Milliliters is fun to say. <laughs> I want to figure out after how many minutes will bucket B have less water. Right? I'm going to kind of rock it through this one a little bit, right? How many minutes? M minutes. M is the number of minutes, right? After that, we got to figure out, all right, bucket A, bucket B, and then this is where we got to figure out where our symbol's going to go, right, or which direction it's going to face. We want to figure out when bucket B will have less water. So bucket B should be less than bucket A, just like I've got it there. After that, we're almost done already in a way, right? Bucket A had 800 milliliters, and then it's leaking, right? So in comparison to the trees on the other one where they were growing and we were adding on, this one's leaking, so we're actually going to be taking away. We're subtracting six per minute. Bucket B, same kind of deal. We've got 1,000 to start, and it's leaking 10 per minute, right? After that, 
hard part's done. We just solve it out. All right, I'm going to add 10M to both sides to move those all to one side. All right. When I do that, I've got 800 plus 4M is greater than 1,000. We'll move that 800 away from where the M's are. We're going to get that 4M is greater than 200. And then we'll divide by 4 to finish things off. Right. So at the very end of this, as long as we're more than 50 minutes in, then bucket B is then going to have less water. All right, so I know I've been talking for a while. I'm going to stop talking, and I will see you next time. Be sure to ask me during class if you still got questions about these. Bye.